Deep Sea Sisters, Part 2. When anyone had last heard from Shelby, it was Gladys of all creatures who had the last word with her. Well, the poor girl was in love. A one-eyed smelt could see she was miserable without this man. I simply told her maybe she should seek out counsel with the great mother of pearl and see what wisdom she might be able to bestow. I thought you weren't going to get involved. Never mind that. Great. And now my sister thinks she can get the mother of all pearls to grant her a wish of being together with this human. I'm going to have to go find her and stop her before something happens to her. Yeah, you don't want her to get caught in any more nets again. Pipe down. Let her go. Maybe it's destiny. If she can just get through Squid Row, she'll be fine. Squid Row. The last outpost on the edge of the underwater kingdom. Home to many lost underwater souls. Though many are gentle and harmless, the occasional Mac the Knife or the Guppy Gang, cute little fish who try to act tough, will sometimes try to stir up some sand, but after that it's just down and down and down and down and down and down, and down we go. And down until you reach the bottom of the sea where Mother of Pearl sits on her throne on the ocean floor, looking upwards, ever diligent, to protect her underwater world. It's been rumored that if you come to the Mother of Pearl with a wish, that she'll thoughtfully weigh your request, and if she deems you worthy, well, she'll give you advice on how to solve your problem. But you only have one chance to ask. And if she thinks your request is not worthy, well, she's been known to banish a mackerel or two to Squid Row. But Shelby just wanted to be with Jasper, and she didn't care about anything else. She sensed that they were destined to be together somehow. Tina showed up all out of breath when she swam into Squid Row, frantically asking anyone she saw if they'd seen her little sister.